Hi everybody, Patrick from Gold Bio here. Today we're going to go over something that is a hallmark of molecular biology, a technique that requires a lot of skill and a lot of patience, but once mastered can unlock the doors to molecular biology nirvana. Pouring an agarose gel. Okay, I know it's not really that challenging or that super cutting edge or really that exciting, but hopefully in this video I can show you some of the tricks that I use to rapidly make and pour an agarose gel so you can get on to more exciting things. To start, we'll go over the super precise, by-the-book way to make and pour an agarose gel that will give you ultra-repeatable results and will please even the most exacting PI. To begin with, you'll need the following. A microwave-safe flask or beaker, TAE or TBE buffer, agarose, a balance, some plastic wrap, and some thick gloves or pot holders. First, you want to determine the percentage of gel you need. You'll want to use a low percentage gel for large DNA pieces and a higher percentage gel for small DNA fragments. We'll be making a 100 ml 1% gel, which is a pretty good all-around gel. You'll start by weighing 1 gram of agarose and adding it to your flask. Next, you'll measure out 100 ml of TAE or TBE buffer and add it to your flask. Swirl it a few times to distribute the agarose. Next, place a small square of saran wrap over the top of the flask and seal it up. I pop a small hole in the top so it can vent using a pipette tip. Before microwaving, you'll want to weigh your flask and write down the starting weight. Next, microwave on 100% power for one minute. You'll want to watch it closely to make sure it doesn't boil over. After the first minute, wait a few seconds, and then remove the flask and swirl very gently. Be very careful when doing this, as it can boil over at any moment. This still needs a little bit more time, so return it to the microwave and continue microwaving in 30 second increments until all the agarose has dissolved. After your agarose is in solution, reweigh the flask and add DIH2O not more buffer to reach your initial weight. It shouldn't take too much. Next, swirl it a little bit and then let it rest on the bench so it can cool until it reaches about 60 degrees Celsius. You don't want to leave it unattended though because the outside of the agar can cool faster than the inside. So every few minutes you'll want to come over, give it a little swirl, and let it cool. Once it's cooled to 60 degrees, you'll be able to put it on the base of your wrist for more than a few seconds. This is still too hot, so it's going to need a few more minutes. After your gel has cooled, you'll want to add your ethidium bromide or your ethidium bromide equivalent. You want to wait till the gel is at 60 degrees to add your ethidium bromide because it can be released with the water vapor if it's too hot. Next, you'll want to cast your gel in your gel casting box. If you get any bubbles present in the top of your gel while you're pouring, you can take a pipette tip and pop the bubbles or move them off to the side. Make sure there are none around the wells of the gel because that can affect the way that the gel runs. You should always pour your gels on a level surface and you can check this with a bubble level before pouring. Allow the gel to solidify at room temperature then load your sample and you'll be off to the races. Now, this is a great way to make your gels, and each individual gel you make will be very similar to the others that you make, which gives you highly repeatable results. But unfortunately, it takes a while and requires a lot of attention. Attention that you may or may not want to give to a gel that you just need to use to quickly check something. For this next part of the video, I'll go over some tips that I use for speeding up the gel making process. And while it doesn't always produce the most consistent of results, they're good enough for a quick PCR or digest check and significantly decreases the amount of attention required. So you don't have to spend so much time staring at a microwave. Tip number one, know your microwave. All microwaves are different, so it can help you if you optimize your settings for the particular gels that you make a lot. If your microwave has an adjustable power setting, Try microwaving on a longer amount of time at a lower power set. For me, a less than 1% gel can usually be microwaved for about three and a half minutes at 50% power and go into solution with no problem and no boilovers. So play around with your microwave.
just make sure to monitor it until you know that you have your settings optimized. Once you have a good time frame for your microwave, this will give you a few minutes to go do something else, like watch another video. Tip number two, skip weighing the flask. I usually skip the weighing and re-weighing step because typically if you don't have a boil over, you won't lose too much buffer in the microwaving process and it won't make a big difference during the running of your gel if your TAE concentration is slightly over 1x. Tip number three, I cool my melted agros in a 60 degree water bath for around five minutes to bring it down to 60 really quickly. A 60 degree oven will also work if you have an available. This is nice because if you have to interrupt your gel making process for whatever reason, the gel will remain liquid at 60, so you can pour it as soon as you get back. Tip number four, let your gel solidify in the fridge. Once the gel is poured, I very carefully transfer the casting box to a designated spot in the refrigerator. I also keep my casting apparatus in the fridge so it's already cold when I add the gel. Just make sure the spot in the fridge is relatively level and make sure no one bumps it if they're getting something else out. Hopefully you found these tips helpful, and maybe we got you thinking a little bit more about your gel electrophoresis. Let us know if you have any of your own tips in the comments, and as always, you can contact me at techsupport at goldbio.com. Thanks for watching!